Hey folks, Tim Miller here, and I got to tell you, I have been shocked and amazed watching what's happening to our great nation over the last, let's just say several years, but in, in the last three years, it's been unbelievable. And I, I just, I want to, I don't even know how to start this. I want you to think about the U.S. that you were raised in. I want you to think about maybe many years ago for, for some of you younger folks, but many years ago, we didn't even lock our doors. We didn't, we played until the sun came down. Nobody ever thought about all of the crazy things that we're working on now and dealing with now. And okay, Tim, I get it. What, what's the point? The point is folks, elections matter. Your leaders either support you or they support others. You've got to think about the U.S. we lived in for the last X number of years compared to where we're going. And I want to start with this Axios article, which is unbelievable to me, but it's entitled Venezuelan Gangs Cause Alarm in Metro Denver. Now listen to this carefully, folks. Two Aurora elected officials say Venezuelan gangs are taking over apartment buildings, but local police haven't confirmed that. Interesting. Why does this matter? Well, the article goes on uh, it was, it, you know, to describe that these gangs are, are vicious, human sp smuggling, money laundering, narcotics trafficking. Um, and, oh, by the way, they're all here. They're not coming here. They're here. Why are they here? Well, because the Venezuelan government actually does selfishly only care about themselves. Maduro is kind of an interesting person anyway, a dictator, and anybody that loves socialism, go, go take a trip down there because you'll love what you see. But he basically said, no, I know I'll get rid of my most violent criminal gangs and send them to the U.S. because all you have to do is walk across the border. Well, guess what, folks? They have. They've walked across the border, and now they're here. And the problem with them being here, let me just say this, I'm all about folks coming from all over the world legally, legal immigrants. That's really, we're all legal immigrants, hopefully, except for the American Indians who had their land stolen. But we, as a nation, are built on folks coming here with different gifted uh, focuses and oh by the way some of our amazing um, technology and breakthroughs have come from folks that have come to the U.S. from other countries legally where I have a problem is illegally and where I have a bigger problem is no way to stop thugs like this from coming into our nation and terrorizing people now listen to the city council, their elected officials. Danielle Jarinski, a Republican, told um, Axios that she's actually helped. Residents and Aurora police officers have told her that this group, Tren de Aragua, which is a, a very violent gang, have taken over at least four apartment complexes. She said she's got engaged by helping people flee, helping residents get out of there. Well, that's, that's awesome. I just wish the city council as a whole, not a Republican or a Democrat thing, obviously the Republicans trying to make a difference here, but I wish as a whole they would rise up and go, no, we're not taking all these violent people here. We're going to protect our own people. No, that seems to be a problem, and it goes all the way up. Elections matter. And in case you're wondering, you know, wow, Tim, you seem spun up. I, I do because uh, I, I really hurt for 
those precious innocent people in these apartment complexes, probably working minimum wage, not able to make ends meet, struggling, and now they get shaken down by thugs. Oh, that's the deal. They'll take your money for protection. I don't know how you feel about that. That fires me up. And just in case you're wondering, well, Tim, you 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 do seem like you know you, you're intense about it. Um, what would you do if this was you? The city nonprofits have lined up um, to help the migrants that have come here, but nobody is helping the American citizens, the residents that are trapped in these apartment complexes. Thank God for elected leaders like Danielle, who's trying to do something to help Americans. Wouldn't it be nice if our government did something to help Americans? And folks, that's why all I want to do on this channel is give you information that if you put into practice, it will help keep us all safer. Because uh, as many of my friends and I talk about, the more good people that are prepared, equipped, and ready to act, the safer all of us are. As a matter of fact, my friend Chuck Holton says this all the time. Everywhere you go should be safer because you are there. Now, I know you get a lot of folks that are older and they're like, hey, I, I don't have the mobility and I get it. But remember, and you hear this a lot, you can make a huge difference by being alert, aware, calm, prepared. You can, you can make a difference in making it not happen. And many of you know, I've been all over the national media, you know, in, in, in relation to the Secret Service uh, and their just catastrophic failure in response uh, to protecting Donald Trump. And, and let me just say this, I take no joy in criticizing an agency I was a part of, and I have immense respect for many, many dedicated, faithful uh, agents that you know are often traveling away from their family, sacrificial, in a second, willing to go into harm's way. But their leadership does not, met, does not uh, represent those people. Their leadership represents themselves. And if you've been tracking what's going on, it's this sick trend within government, just like we saw here. Oh, nothing to see here. This isn't a problem. Oh, no, it's a problem. If you live in two of those apartment complexes that have been taken over by thugs, it's a big problem. And for any of you that have been bullied, you know that bullying is perhaps the worst psychological thing that can happen to you. And so here we go. Okay. We're in a situation now, open borders. Terrorists have come in. By the way, we're going to start seeing them do their thing soon. We've got many on the watch list that have crossed over. The FBI tells us nothing to see here. Oh, wait, but then Director Ray comes out and goes five times. Red lights flashing, bad things are going to happen. Well, just like we see in the situation in Aurora, is anybody doing anything about it? Is anybody saying, no, we've got to get these people and deport them, get them out of our country, or we charge them, or we make sure that they're not a danger to anybody. That would be what I would call protecting the American people. But back to the point. Unless you get engaged with all that you are in the voting process, in the electoral process, by making sure your elected leaders are very much aware of your concerns, um, unless we hold school boards accountable, unless, 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 and here's the bottom line, if you like the direction that this country's going, then do nothing because you're going to get a whole lot more of it. But if you're listening to this and you're saying, you know, I do need to get involved, I need to pray, that's my big thing, pray first, but then 
get engaged. Danielle, the city council person in uh, Aurora, didn't didn't feel like it was enough to sit and talk with the city council about why all this was horrible. She started going to families and helping them move out, helping them find and relocate to other areas that are safer. So let's talk very quickly, as we always do, about the before, the during, and the after. Based on the video, you saw five armed gang members outside of your door. And I got to tell you, this one's going to be an easy one because most of it is going to be before. And we talk about this all the time. If these folks are allowed to continue doing what they're doing without good people stopping them, i.e. the police, military, whoever, they're going to continue to do what evil does, and that's steal, kill, and destroy. So beforehand, rather than waiting for this in Aurora, what if residents got together? What if they said, we're demanding protection from you? What if they begin to vote? Uh, I'm sure many do not in some of the areas that are targeted by these gangs. So beforehand, being actively involved in the community, forming protective measures together. Remember, folks, we are powerful together, working with neighbors even to identify, notice, notify police, neighborhood watch types of things. Those are things that before this happens, we need to be engaged. Now, food, water, you hear this all the time, personal protection and defense, and then uh, making sure your shelter is secure. Um, I always recommend three to six months of food. People say, what kind? I don't care. Patriot. Uh, I use wise food because it lasts for whatever, 30 years. Let me just say this. You're going to need to be able to survive for three months, three to six months in a true catastrophic event in the United States. So food, water, how do you get water? Well, if you're in an apartment, it's difficult. You've got to have measures that you can filtrate water. Uh, some people have gone to the five-gallon jugs. They use that regularly, but they'll have 15 or 20 of those jugs uh, in a crisis situation. You know, having 100 gallons of water certainly is not going to meet the need, but it's going to enable you to prolong and survive. And then we get to the defense part. Everybody needs to know how to defend themselves. If you're older, you still can play a critical difference. Seek, seeking out folks like Matt Pasquilini, making sure he's the YouTube guy that teaches older people how to defend themselves with canes and other things. You can make a difference. Do not settle back and say, I'm just going to be a victim. But then the last thing is shelter. And we've talked a lot about reinforcing doors in an apartment complex. But let me ask you a question. Is it time, given everything that's going on, just to get out? And you may say, well, I don't have money to do all that. Well, you might find it cheaper outside of the city. Maybe there's another job. Maybe you can work from home from a place much cheaper. Here's the point. If you're in a city in the U.S., um, and I will tell you, I've been in some really bad places on this earth. I've been in Nigeria. I've been in Haiti. I've been in, I, I could go down the list uh, where you never really felt safe. I feel safer there than I do now walking in some U.S. cities. And quite frankly, the bottom line is there's no excuse for it. It's what our elected leaders have done to us. Our elected leaders have ensured that we are dependent on them. Well, guess what? It's time for Americans to be dependent on us. I think it's really important, folks, that you begin to think about how quickly things have changed in the last three years and ask yourself, where are we going to be in three years? if things don't change. And oh, by the way, many of you are going to say, oh, well, the elections will save everything. No, it won't. I don't care if it's a Republican or Democrat in office. There's so much danger here inside of the U.S. Discord, hatred, anti-Semitism has exponentially raised. Violent crime is on the increase. You're going to still need to think about how would I 
protect myself, others, and survive. And folks, I know this is not the best, most uh, light conversation that I could have, but I just really feel like in these times, I need to communicate to you the urgency of what's going on and the urgency that should drive us to get engaged. Uh, whatever you do, please elect it, state, federal level, vote. Make sure you're engaged in the process. Reach out to your elected officials. Let them know your concerns for what's happening in our country. I will tell you, politicians respond to pressure. Uh, and my hope and prayer is that with everything going on, a lot more good people step up and go, no, 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 we're not doing that. I mean, this is not the America that we want. So, folks, I hope and pray this is helpful. Do me a favor. I'm getting crushed on YouTube. They don't want what I talk about out there. And I don't make the algorithms and all that kind of stuff that they, you know, they quote unquote uh, identify <laughs> as required frustrating. So do me a favor, like, hit, share, subscribe. Um, and, and hopefully, if there are other things you'd like for me to cover, I'm going to start doing some more lives. Um, please let me know. It's been a bit busy season for us just trying to keep up with helping people and organizations. By the way, we do offer training. Um, if you go to our website at Lionheart International Services Group, um, dot com, it's actually L H isg.com uh, and then go to events you'll see some of the training that we're offering in florida and it's coming up quick and that would be a great time to jump on it so i hope and pray that uh, this is helpful hope and pray that you stay safe out there and um, we will absolutely be talking to you again soon god bless